Are you serious? groaned several of the students. We've done this assignment like three times already. Do you seriously think we need to do it again? cried a cheerleader in the back row of the classroom. You're the devil, said a kid in the front row, his eyes drawn to tight slits. The teacher took a ruler and slammed it down on her desk. The wooden stick exploded into a flurry of splinters. She had a moment where her eyes went wide as the shards flew across the room. Composing herself, she tossed the ruler aside. You've done this assignment so many times because none of you seem to have it right yet. This is creative writing, not Nazi Camp 101. First off, said the teacher, straightening out her tight pencil skirt, that's the stupidest statement ever. Hey, the teacher held up her hand, quieting the student. The teacher pulled the small reading glasses from her face in an overly dramatic gesture. She rubbed her eyes as she continued to hold her hand up. Finally, she put the glasses back on. Stupidest, she said again. The reason you keep doing this assignment is because you're learning a valuable process. You can bring your stories to life on the page, but it's the editing that will take you to the next step. So we're going to have a bit of a write-in, where we come up with new ideas and see how they compare to our first. Then we'll break up for peer critiques. Yeah, I get that, the teacher made a sign across her throat to cut the talking. Her other hand reached around on her desk looking for the splintered ruler. If he opened his mouth... She was pretty sure she could stab him before she had to hear his nasally voice again. If we can get through the rest of this class without you complaining, I'll bring Starbucks for everybody tomorrow. Several of the people in the classroom smiled in response. There was complete silence in the class until one girl graciously said, Wow, that's a lot of coffee. The teacher nodded. I know a girl who works there. She obtained rock star status. She was the divine presence in the room as long as she offered to bribe them. This gig started a few months prior and she was already learning how to manipulate and control teenagers. When threats of violence wouldn't work, food and free coffee would. She stifled a chuckle. And most teachers went to school for this? It was a piece of cake. Okay, So for this assignment, we're going to take a look at confining your novels to a set space and within a set amount of time. Some of you have decided that you're the Tolkien's of the new generation and want to write long, exasperated epic novels. However, what if you were given the restriction of 48 hours? What if you could only write about the actions happening within a single room? What would drive your story? How would your characters handle this confined space? Her students stared captivated at her words. Occasionally, she managed to grasp their attention. Her creative writing course was a new class at the high school. The woman who should have been teaching the course had won the lottery and decided to give notice. One of the small children in the back of the room raised their hands slowly, carefully, worried that they would invoke the teacher's wrath. The woman nodded in the direction of the kid, and they finally asked, "'Do we have any restriction on genre or motivation?' The teacher smiled. What if your characters are trapped in a warehouse while they're contemplating their escape? All the smiles faded. They're met with a zombie outbreak. The class groaned in unison. What? asked the teacher. Mrs. Winters? raised the hand of a small boy all in black. Do we have to include zombies again? Again? asked the teacher. Another girl began speaking. Seriously, I get it. You're the all-powerful and mighty Mrs. Winters, 17 best-selling novels. I also get that it's been three years since your last novel, but requiring us to write this drivel over and over again? What do you hope to accomplish? Katie threw her hands up in the air. First off, you bleach-blonde sack of estrogen. The whole class gasped. I am in the midst of preparing for my 18th novel, so you can bite me. Second, besides teaching you some decent literary skills, you never know when an in-depth look at the zombie culture could save your life. All the students in the room froze at the comment. They had suspected there was something wrong with the writer ever since she began teaching at Boxford. Her obsession with the living dead made them wonder if she was still sane. She was mocked by the blondes and hailed as a champion amongst the goths. However, the classroom still found it best to freeze during her outbursts. She growled, If zombies show up today, I'm going to trip every one of you little bastards. There was an audible intake of breath from each of the students. Like you haven't heard worse. Jesus Christ, one of the kids said out loud. The original zombie, Cadence said without batting an eyelash. What? 
He dies, comes back to life.